The Chaitya cave is indeed beautiful, said a stone worker. That, that is as it should be, for the stupa contains a hair of the enlightened one. The richly dressed figures carved outside with their hair done elaborately are donors or the parents of donors. The monks themselves are simple men, close-shaven and dressed in saffron robes, and their cells are as simple as their dress. On the side of the hill, you have seen the rows of cells where they sleep. There are single cells and some double cells where a guru may sleep attended by his shishya. Then there are dormitory cells for the younger monks and for guests. The bed is a narrow ledge in the rock with a stone headrest. Jimut listened eagerly. Suddenly, his aunt called out angrily, Lazy one, you play all day and now you sit up to listen to the conversation of grown-ups. Tomorrow, you will be late taking the goats to pasture. And as Jimut slunk past her, she slapped him. Day after day, Jimut took the goats to the hilltop. As he passed the monastery, he longed to talk to the monks, but he never got a chance to do so. One day, however, he took up the goats much later than usual, for his uncle was ill and he had been looking after him. As he left the hut, he saw a tall young monk walking along, holding out his bowl, asking for nothing but thanking those who gave him something. This was monk Anand, who had just come from the hill monastery at Trirashmi, which is today's Nasik, to complete his studies at Karla. The young monk held out his bowl silently, and the villagers put in a share of what they had. Some housewives put in handfuls of rice, Others gave curds wrapped in a leaf. Jimut had only a coarse black bajri roti for the whole day. But he longed to give something, so he put in half of his roti. The monk smiled and thanked him. Jimut decided to share his food daily with the monks. He said, I would be honoured to give daily to the monk's bowl. But I leave the houses at dawn. If there was a bowl left by the pillar, I would put in the food on my way. Monk Anand did not want to take anything from the lad's meagre meal, but he did not want to disappoint him. We will ask Monk, monk Madhusudan, he said. Later, he consulted the old monk, who said, We will find a way. We must not discourage the child's desire to give. When Jimut came up a few mornings later, he found the two monks waiting for him. We are very grateful to you for wanting to help the community, said the old monk gravely. The bowl will be left here every seventh day when we have visitors and need more food. I will show you how to divide your food. Break your bread into two. Take one part and break it into three. Like this, put one of the three bits into the bowl. But that is just a very small bit, sir, said Jimut. Little gifts given with love are the gifts most acceptable to the great Lord Buddha. And many small gifts make big gifts in the end. Look at this great stone house. Many givers, rich and poor, have made gifts through the years. So, and so, we have this beautiful hall of worship for the great Lord Buddha. Now, you must go, said the old monk with a smile. Someday, monk Anand will tell you about the great Lord Buddha and his message.
to mankind. Then, for a few days, the monks did not see the little boy. The elder's wife told monk Anand that Jimut had high fever. So, he took leaves and herbal remedies for the sick child and in a week, Jimut was well again. Jimut's friendship with monk Anand had been strengthened by his illness. Now, Jimut eagerly asked questions after questions. At the entrance to the Chaitya cave stood a tall pillar with four great beasts at the top. What are these animals, sir? He asked Anand. These are Simha, lions. We find them in the north, said Anand. They are sometimes carved on the heads of tall pillars. The inscription on the pillar reads, this great pillar donated by Agni Mittanaka, son of Goti, a Maharati. Did he stay here and build it? asked Jimat. No, said Anand, smiling. The caves have been built by gifts from people, kings and nobles, merchants and craftsmen. Basket makers and plowmen have all helped. And the work is done by our skilled stone masons. Could I do it, sir? asked Jimut shyly. There are guilds of workmen for different kinds of work, Anand explained. A worker has to attain great skill before he can be accepted into the guild. At the back of the pillar was the carving of a man and a woman. Anand said, those are Devpal and his wife, Shama. They live in Karjak. They have given a lot of land to the monastery. So these images are carved in the memory of them. From these lands, we get grain for the monastery and its guests. A monk needs only a yellow robe and simple food. Kind donors provide our needs so that we can give all our time to learning and teaching the dharma. Sometimes the sale of the produce of the land pays for the oil for lamps for the monastery. Come in and look at the fifth pillar from the left. It says here, this pillar is the gift of Dhamma Yavana from Dhenu Kakata. The third pillar and others too are gifts from Yavanas who come from distant lands. Old monk Madhusudan said, The beautiful people arch is in memory of the people tree under which Buddha sat when he attained wisdom. All who enter the cave under it must come seeking truth and wisdom. If you have no time to enter, stand under the people arch and recite these words. Om Mani Padme Om. Buddha is on his lotus throne. Then Buddha's peace will be with you. When in pain or trouble, Buddha's peace will remain with you. The pain will disappear or become more bearable. Monk Anand also told Jimut about the great emperor Ashoka, who, victorious in war, had given it up after seeing the pain it inflicted. Ashoka had spread Lord Buddha's message far and wide, and thus Buddha's teachings had come to Middle India. Anand told Jimut of other cave monasteries among the hills of western India, of the monastery of Bhaja, not far from Karla, and of the monastic establishment at Nasik. He told Jimut that, that the influence of the wise one had been such that rulers all over the country holding different beliefs respected and helped the monks of the yellow robe. He told of the foreign ruler Ushwadatta, son-in-law 
of Sakka Satra Nafana, whose inscriptions both at Nasik and Karla showed that he gave gifts to both Brahmins and Buddhists. Among other things, he had given cows to Brahmins and a plantation of 800 coconut palms for the maintenance of a Buddhist cave at Nasik. Both at Karla and Nasik were inscriptions telling how the Satkarni rulers who had succeeded the foreign Shaka Shatraps or viceroys had confirmed and improved the gifts made by those earlier rulers. Above the door frieze was an inscription that said how King Gotamiputra confirmed a gift of the village of Karajaka made to the monks by former rulers. Poor people also wanted to give gifts to the monks. Anand pointed out the stone belt at the base of the arch. This was donated by the nun Ashadhamita, who must have collected donations from, for it from many humble donors. A rich sate, a merchant, whose name figured in the inscriptions was Bhutpala, who had donated two beautiful five-storied friezes carved in relief at both sides of the entrance. Jimat was curious about the Yavana merchants who often came by sea from lands far to the west. Anand told him that long ago they had come by land with a young conqueror, Sikandar. But they had gone back later. Now they came as peaceful traders and were greatly interested in Buddha's teachings. Jimut noticed that many of the donors, Yavanas and others, Simhadatta, the perfume seller, and Samina, the carpenter, came from Dhenu Kakata. He counted 14 in all. It was wonderful to think how many people loved the Lord Buddha and his monks. One evening, after Jimat had assembled his flock, he discovered that one goat was missing. It was a black billy goat and his uncle would never forgive him if it was lost. It was getting dark, so Jimat decided to get the flock home and creep out later to find the missing goat. On the way, he passed an old monk who said, Hurry home, the villagers have brought news of a leopard. Jimut thought mournfully, I must go back again, leopard or no leopard. And as soon as everyone was asleep, he set off up the hillside. As Jimut climbed up, he wept softly, for he was tired and frightened. Then he remembered monk Madhusudan's advice that when in trouble, he should repeat the words, Buddha is on his lotus throne. Now he was no longer afraid. He trudged still higher. At last he heard a faint bleat and found the goat on top of a rock. The goat bleated joyfully. Then suddenly the bleating was filled with fear. Jimat turned around. Two green eyes gleamed in the night. And a dark form approached. 